This is Bowdoin. This is our second home. This is where we live, learn, practice, meet new friends, eat, sleep, and grow together. We coexist in this unique community of people with all different backgrounds and ways of life. What happens when mere coexistence is a daily struggle? What happens when people don't feel safe here and have no one to turn to? I think for the first time that night, when I was walking home alone and it was dark out, I felt unsafe at Bowdoin. And that was one of the worst feelings I've ever had here. It started as soon as I got here on campus. Um, I was very, it became very aware that there were certain, um, the way the school was set up in such a way where certain students did not feel welcome. And um, there's a perception that you're coming from a certain background where um, you won't really fit in or that your background and interest and status is not reflected in the um, greater Brunswick community and at Bowdoin. I came to Bowdoin and I don't know, at home it never occurred to me that there were other reasons for my success than my hard work. I felt like I, I did well because I worked hard. And when I came to Bowdoin, I felt like there was this kind of underlying questioning of why I'm here or whether or not I have the right to be here because because I'm black. As if, um, I, I guess the joke was that you're, like, you're in affirmative action acceptance. Like we just brought you here um, to fill a quota. I entered into Bowdoin College too hopeful, too worried, too optimistic, too pessimistic. I was ready to get away from home. I was too scared to leave my daddy's arms. Still, I, had my, I held my head up high and I forced a smile when one of my floor mates always made snide comments about my race or asked me to be the judge of whether or not something was too ghetto. I will never forget it, the isolation I felt, the feeling that I just didn't belong. And instead of rising to the challenge, I admit, I chickened out, I hid from my floor mates. I avoided, ha I avoided having to deal with and correct the ignorance or misunderstandings. I allowed myself to be placed in a loud and ghetto girl category who only got into Bowdoin because of affirm affirmative action. So there was this one incident where I was sitting in the library in H&L and I was on the second floor in the glass room, the Pierce reading room. And there were two other girls in the room, and all of a sudden we heard somebody yelling outside, faggot, really loudly, like repeatedly, like five or six times. And it just sounded so angry. And we looked outside, because we all heard it, even the girl who was listening to music pretty loudly heard it. And uh, the guy didn't go to Bowdoin, but at the same time I felt so unsafe and scared. It was... One of the most unsettling experiences I've ever had. To be quite honest, I did not realize how, I say black I was, but I did not, I was not aware of my color until I came to vote. And like they made it very clear that I was an African American. And I don't know if it makes any sense, maybe it's something wrong with me that I can go 18 years and not know that I'm, I'm black. Like I knew <laughs> that, but it's just that it became more apparent. Arms full of books heading to the library with one of my friends from South Africa, and it happened. A car full of white men screeched to a halt in front of us, screaming the word nigger. In the foulest, most disturbing, and angriest way that I had ever heard this word used, I felt embarrassed. Had my friend understood what had happened, apartheid was only over for, what, 10 years? And now he comes here to face more racism. I was humiliated and ashamed of myself. I can shake the feeling of shame. I know it was one word. I know it only shows the other person's ignorance. But it was something about the way it was said that made my skin crawl. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was so angry how one word could bring about such a shame within me. I didn't want to be black because if I wasn't black, then it wouldn't mean that I was inferior, that I was stained, that I was doomed to be different for the rest of my life. So one time I was at work, I work at the pub, and I came out at 2 in the morning or something after the, like, the last shift, uh, and there was a bunch of people, like guys, sitting, like standing outside of, you know where the two bathrooms are, and then um, in the union, mm -hmm. and so I came out and I saw a bunch of them, and I was like, okay, just heading like toward the polar bear to go out, whatever, um, and they were like, oh, I wonder what kind of, what bathroom it's going to go into. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> like, please, I don't want, like, conflict right now. 
Um, and luckily I didn't have to use the restroom, so I just like headed out towards the polar bear. But like in that moment, I was really nervous that like these drunk random guys at two in the morning were going to like give me shit for not looking like one or the other and just kind of being androgynous. Um, and identifying as trans and not really fitting into that binary of the bathroom just made me like really nervous in that moment. Um, the bias incidents in town mm -hmm. um, were actually quite surprising to me um, because I've lived here now 10 years and um, my boys go to the, have gone to the public high school and so I'm, I'm the president of Bowdoin but I'm, I actually really live here. And so I was very surprised, actually, to hear that there were folks sort of screaming this stuff out the windows. On campus, um, uh, it's always disappointing when people start writing things on whiteboards. And, and, um, and so am I surprised by it? Um, I'm disappointed by it. Um, do I think it's going to happen now and again? Uh, again, we're in the real world. We, we shouldn't like be so afraid to um, talk about race, and we shouldn't be so passive-aggressive about it either. I would like to see diversity, which I'm not a big fan of the word anymore, because people just throw it around like, hey, here, but um, I would like to see diversity meaningfully engaged. Not just how many people can we get here from different places and different backgrounds, but how can we get them here and, ha and, make, and make, it, make room for people to engage with each other. Create an environment where people actually celebrate difference and will talk about it. Because I think what people are reacting to as much as the bias incidents is sort of the silence that people have about difference. Find your voice. Disrupt your own assumptions. Take a stand. I'm a black woman and I refuse to be put in whatever box society decides they want to throw me in and I'm both. I'm a scholar. You hear? I'm a scholar. And I am both. And too complicated to describe in one word, I'm motive. I actually think that being different at Bowdoin, not only being gay or being Jewish or any of these things, I think just having different components of my identity that I can kind of separate from other people's identities has made me feel stronger in a sense. I think that it's actually really refreshing to not feel like you're totally blending in or fitting in. And although a lot of things that come with that suck, and you have to deal with the hardships that come with people not understanding how you feel or discriminating against you, it's definitely, I would say, a more powerful experience, especially at college. Honestly, for the first time the other day, I decided, like, I really wouldn't change anything about me, and I'm, like, really happy. To